Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and uh, while I'm still sick, I am absolutely excited to make today's video because ladies and gentlemen, remember a while back, uh, not a while back, maybe a couple weeks ago, uh, I talked about Doom and how it was entirely going to be like AI generated in the sense that there is an actual project where people have generated Doom from thousands of hours of footage of Doom. Now, obviously, I think this is pretty wild in terms of, you know, computer engineering, AI stuff. But at the time, it wasn't really something that was playable. It just generated videos of Doom. You might as well just play Doom on an actual computer, okay? But of course, today we're looking at something known as Diamond, which is Diffusion for World Modeling Visual Details Matter in Atari. So we're going to skip back the Atari stuff because, ladies and gentlemen, this is Counter-Strike Global Offensive or Counter-Strike 2, whatever the, whatever the heck it's named nowadays, entirely running through artificial intelligence. Now, I wouldn't be making a video on this if all you could do was just generate footage. That would be stupid. No, today we're actually going to be playing our first AI game on YouTube. <laughs> Insane stuff. So, of course, ladies and gentlemen, one of the clips that I saw over here was this one uh, researcher, like, playing Counter-Strike through this artificial intelligence. Now, this is running, from my understanding, on an RTX 3090, which is still a pretty expensive and very heavy card. So, today, I'm running this on an RTX 4090 underneath my system. So the first thing that I had to do is I had to clone their GitHub repository. And one thing that I will say is generating this GitHub repository and like actually getting it to work came with a whole plethora of errors. There were some consistency problems. I literally had to go into their actual requirements folder and just install every single dependency one by one by one, which wasn't really the biggest, you know, pain in the ass. The big pain in the ass was getting this to work on my actual graphics card. Yeah, if you're running this without a graphics card, you're looking at a frame rate of one. One, even if you have some of the best processors on the market. So a GPU is absolutely required and a very high quality, fast GPU is exactly what you need. So of course, first things first, obviously we're like a couple minutes into this video. I'm not gonna keep you here too long, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna actually fire this up and see AI Counter-Strike. All right, so here I've got the actual thing initialized, ladies and gentlemen, right over here. And we're gonna hit enter. And uh, lo and behold, if you're looking at it real carefully, ladies and gentlemen, uh, obviously this is a bit hard to see, so I'm gonna zoom in through the power of editing. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is in fact Counter-Strike Global Offensive running in an RTX 4090 at a frame rate of eight, I would assume, if we're lucky. And uh, yeah, it's actually generating the entire world as I'm feeding it actual input. So if I hit space, jump, you can see that it recognizes the jump key. My character actually jumps in the universe and then stays still. <laughs> so yeah, this is basically uh, the game world imagining. And if you look very carefully, it is absolutely um, getting a little crazy. Like if you look at the distance, uh, it's very easy to break this matrix. And of course, the more we jump, uh, hopefully we're landing. So we're dropping a little bit. And uh, yeah, we actually do touch the floor and uh, we are going into the first arch. So right over here, and we can go to one of the old bomb sites. You can see like the distance shadowing, things are kind of a blurry mess. And that's just one of the things with artificial intelligence as it denoises the image and it looks, you know, normal. This is trying to literally build a world. There is no actual game code from Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This is literally an AI model imagining the next actual frames as I'm giving it input, based on obviously footage that has been gathered about like Counter-Strike Dust 2, which is by the way, one of the most popular maps on Counter-Strike for anybody that has no idea what Counter-Strike is. So of course the mouse I'm moving around, you know, if you look very carefully, I can like shake the mouse around, I can shake the, shake the mouse, move my movement around and like, you know, change the viewport. And obviously one thing that you're seeing over here is it's pretty good. Like it's actually got the fucking logic down. So where it really kind of starts to break a little bit is when you, you know, move the camera a little bit to the right. So you can see the vehicle is over there. Things are starting to blur up. And, you know, if you give it some time, it'll kind of stabilize. But of course, if we turn around a little bit here and there, you'll notice, okay, the actual tunnel is still there. So it's kind of got the logic and again, this is all built off of the hours of footage it's got from, you know, all the Dust 2 stuff. 
So yeah, you can see that obviously it, it, it really does work. So if we can enter over here, you can see that I am now in a different part of the map. And of course I can even fire the gun as well. So I can hold the, I can hold the left mouse button down. And if you kind of look at the gun, it does appear to be shooting, although it's, 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 it's nothing impressive. If I hit three, I can switch to the knife or it's just, the gun's just going to keep like changing in between like a submachine gun and an assault rifle. No, here it is. I got the, I got the actual knife and uh, yeah. So obviously right off the bat, I'm going to cut this off right here. Nothing is super duper impressive, but well, I mean, it is pretty impressive, but obviously frame rate wise way far from playable. So to give you guys a context of this one thing, the way that this entire process works is they apparently have trained a diffusion model to predict the next frame of the game. So the diffusion model takes into account the agent's action, basically as I was you know, moving my mouse around, hitting WASD, and then it simulates the actual response. So this is one that they have with you know, Kung Fu Master. So one previous frame and then a current frame. So after you hit left and punch, it should, in theory, get rid of the actual enemy that you have punched. And again, you can see that in the process, it generates the image and denoises it until you get something that logically makes sense. So, of course, they tried it with a whole bunch of other games like Breakout, for instance. Um, again, I'm not super into like my whole Atari gaming knowledge. I, this is far, 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 far older than I am. But of course, you've got, you know, all these other games. You can see like an actual uh, representation of how Breakout seems to be working. And yeah, these, these are like Atari games. Now, if you look real closely, I actually did get these Atari games working underneath my Mac M1, so it is going to be laggy. If you look at the footage over here, you can see that I'm interacting and moving the paddle at the bottom left and right, as is also denoted by the actual program's debug process. So there is actual like gameplay that is happening based off of, again, the AI's interpretation of how Breakout works. Now, I don't know if this is entirely digging into the game logic or the ROM, or if there's some like hybrid emulation going on, but this is pretty impressive stuff to see, right? We're actually dealing with AI generations for video games happening in, in real time. So while this is laggy, I wanna also, again, preface this is my M1 Max, so it's a bit older when it comes to Mac hardware. I'm sure this might be faster on like an M3 processor, but if you look at the actual performance, you can see that I'm not really getting a lot of, you know, good frames, for the amount of CPU usage, which is peaking literally at 100% like on this CPU, like it is actually throttling the system, this is how much this stuff consumes. So to go back to the Counter-Strike, right, which is, you know, what we're looking at here, one of the ways to make it faster is to get rid of some of those denoising steps so we can actually simulate it faster. So going into the actual configuration files of this uh, model, which right over here, if we go to config trainer.yaml and we just do edit and we go to world model environment and we just change this to fast, which should get rid of some of those denoising steps and making this a far faster experience. This is gonna really blow your mind. So we're gonna hit play right over here. And of course it's, uh, it's firing up, it's getting the model ready. Now you can compile this to make it faster, but like I said in the beginning, there's a lot of dependency errors with this shit. So I couldn't actually get it to compile because I needed to do a whole bunch of other things. Uh, that said, any software that I show you on my channel, as since the beginning, um, run at your own risk. We're going to hit enter. And this is where, again, it blows minds. So if you're looking at this real quickly, ladies and gentlemen, this is substantially more playable than when we last looked at it. So if you're looking at this real carefully, this is obviously a version of Counter-Strike global offensives AI that is running at a higher frame rate. I think at least we're getting 40 uh, something frames. And again, this is an RTX uh, 4090. So again, understandably, this is the fastest card I think you can get on the market and it still has issues uh, or it's still not fast enough. So of course you can see that my gun keeps changing like camouflages. Like at one point it changed from like one version of the M4 to another. And of course, within like a second, it just absolutely came crashing down. So of course, the more we move throughout this environment, the more the AI is literally imagining where you could be. So here we've completely failed. So if we had enter, we're in a different environment. We've reset everything. And of course you can see I've got the, oh, whoa. Okay, already broke. <laughs> so here it is, we're going around, um, we're entering in the area. So yeah, we've got the actual um, door over there that's open. Let's get to CT spawn. 
So CT spawn is fine. Uh, so if we go over here and uh, we make a uh, we make a turn on long, you can see that long over there is calculated pretty well. My gun seems to be completely changing up. I'm switching off to like a knife, which, you know, here I've got my knife, which has turned into a Desert Eagle now, <laughs> which has turned into a Tech 9. <laughs> now if I go up here, you can see that, like, okay, give it a second. We are now spawned in a totally different location. <laughs> I'm now on long. <laughs> you know, people always say like AI generated stuff feels like a dream, but this is literally the exact definition of a dream. Like this feels like I'm actually playing a dream world right now. So again, we're, no matter where we go, my dream takes me back to long. It's like fucking Silent Hill in this universe, dude. <laughs> I'm like back to the beginning. So if I try to go up and plant this bomb, which I, I don't really think that... Oh, wait, no, I might be able to do so. I'm right here. Oh, my God. I, I can't actually plant the bomb. Oh, no. We switched to an entirely different area. We are now in a different world model. Uh, okay. Can't really scope down. Hit enter. Okay, so this is one that's interesting. So if I turn around over here, one thing you'll notice is obviously it's broken. Like... The thing about this kind of a model is like, it has been built off of so much data from Dust2, like video footage, which we'll look at briefly later on, just uh, down the road as I'm, oh, I'm, I think I'm falling through walls, that uh, the way that it's figuring out the map, for instance, like long, is that it's seen this frame like a million times, like this vehicle. So it knows that if I turn right, it should be long, as it knows that if I'm facing down long from this perspective, if I turn 180 degrees, it should be either this wall, or if I hold right, I should be able to go up this ramp. So again, uh, I don't know why I decided to reload. Maybe somebody at this point during the recording decided to reload and the AI thinks that's just logically what makes sense. So that's kind of how this stuff is working at the end of the day. Like there is no code from uh, Valve. There is no map data from Dust2. It's literally just taking photos and videos of this map that it's seen and trying to judge location, logic, uh, based on the current perspective that you're seeing. Now, obviously, this is incredibly impressive because it's happening in literal real time. So at some point when this, this stuff obviously breaks, like here it's just trying to generate garbage frames because it really doesn't know what to go off of. Like it's trying to make any sense of it. And again, it's much like dreaming, right? Like when your synapses in your brain fire off, I mean, you're literally like trying to make sense of random, uh, you know, incoherent things. And that's kind of what I feel like is going on with this artificial intelligence. So one of the things that people can kind of speculate is obviously down the road with AIs like this, what if somebody decided, hey, what if I fed it like hundreds of thousands of hours of Grand Theft Auto 5 footage, right? And what if I said, okay, now generate me a new Grand Theft Auto game that I can play entirely through artificial intelligence. Now, obviously, I think the complexities are going to be a little bit more in intense there. But yeah, this is one of those, like, I guess, future possible scenarios. So to go back to the entire project, one thing that they mentioned was, like, this is the data set they used. Counter-Strike Deathmatch with large-scale behavioral cloning. So if you open that up over here, you can see that this is the footage um, right here. You can see that this is all the, this is, like, examples of it. And I think they mentioned how many hours of footage they needed. We used 5,003 episodes to train the model. This corresponds to 5 million frames or 87 hours of gameplay. You needed 87 hours of Dust2 to generate the world that we did. And of course, for them, the training time took them 12 days on an RTX 4090, which again, is pretty impressive based on the stuff that I've seen. So I, I want to say like a month ago, we went from like looking at Doom AI generated <laughs> you know, not in real time, to now playing Counter-Strike AI generated in fucking real time. The amount of, the, the rate that this technology is progressing at is actually insane. And do I think that this will replace any form of gaming down the road? Not immediately, just in the sense that obviously for a multiplayer game like Counter-Strike, you need something that can handle world, um, you need you need an AI that can understand and like keep track of locations in the world, right? Like obviously the only way that this was able to really map out locations was looking at the perspective and inferring 
uh, what should come logically after looking at 87 hours worth of footage. You know, immediately like turning your camera 180 degrees sometimes just broke the AI because realistically it wasn't like calculating a map or anything of that nature. So if AI can figure that out, interesting and cool stuff. And obviously for a future crazy endeavor like Grand Theft Auto, like an open world game, it needs to actually remember the entire open world that it generates, which I think is a far bigger task than one would even one would even like, you know, think of. But of course, you know, this stuff is progressing so fast that who knows, maybe before GTA 6, we might even fucking get GTA 6 in AI. So obviously one of the things that I've seen floating around on the internet, and I'm sure you guys have seen it too, is these kind of videos where people are creating video games, but regenerating them with like video tools like Runway AI. So there's one video I saw that blew me away like two weeks ago was this one right here. GTA 5 gameplay, but it's reimagined by AI. Now it looks kind of like a, a uh, PlayStation 1. It almost looks like a old school like PC like click it almost feels like a uh, point-and-click adventure game. Like, watch this. It's like an old FMV-style game. Good to see you, man. What? You forget our language? Uh, Maybe a little. I've been here 10 years. You could speak English. Remember, we learned that the English girls... You're like, hold on. Why did they just change characters? Uh, it's because of the limitations, I think, of, like, runway AI. Like, I think you can only generate, like, 10-second-long videos. So they have to keep, like, you know, just splicing together the footage. But to go forward a little bit beyond this cutscene, this part actually blows me away. So if you look at it real carefully, I'm going to close the music down because obviously copyrighted um, soundtrack. You can see that it is turning Grand Theft Auto 4's root gameplay footage into apparently a pretty interesting view through runway AI. So obviously it's got the... Uh, <laughs> rain-soaked streets that you find in every graphics mod, but it's got fog. It's calculating Algonquin in the background. Um, I mean, this is like interesting stuff. When you got the radar in the corner, it just assumes it's like a mirror or something. So it's got this intense blur. It almost feels like watching an old school, like Russian gangster movie. <laughs> it's insane how good it is. And obviously a lot of this has to do with how it's prompted to present this footage. But yeah, it's, it, it's trying to figure out the objects in the distance the traffic, and in some cases, I will say it's pretty good with like logic consistency here, like trying to keep things looking consistent in a world. But yeah, to go back to the project over here, obviously this is something that has been pushing my RTX 4090 as I've been making this video to 100%. Now, obviously very inefficient in terms of like utilizing a graphics card. You know, you can go from, you know, running Cyberpunk 2077 with full path tracing, or uh, you can run Silent Hill 2 with like the settings completely cranked up and max out that GPU. Or you can run an AI dream version of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now the thing is, obviously, you know, down the road, you know, a year from now, I want to see where this kind of technology really goes from. Like, are we actually going to have that Doom completely playable within like this AI model? That would be interesting to see. But yeah, when I saw this, I was kind of blown away. I thought maybe it was just generating videos to begin with, but to actually be able to play my first AI game, wild shit indeed. So if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it, I am out.